All right, hi everyone, I'm Ben. Welcome back to the Data Literacy Video Channel. So we're gonna go through today the notable app plugin that's now available on the ChatGPT website for ChatGPT Plus subscribers. This video is a follow-up to the Code Interpreter review that we did last month where we showed how these new LLM tools are revolutionizing data and data analytics. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in to what we see here with the Notable plugin. Okay, so here we are in chat GPT. I'm selecting GPT-4 and the plugins beta. I'm choosing the Notable plugin, which here you can see is checked. Okay, so in order to test this out a little bit, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to go to this site on data.gov. This is electric vehicle population data in my home state of Washington. Currently happens to be the most popular uh, data set on the entire platform. And we're gonna use that CSV. We are going to also use this project, which I just created here in my notable, my free notable account. It's a brand new project that we're gonna use to create notebooks within it in order to do some analysis. Okay, so there we have it, data set and project. We're going to go ahead and create our prompt. So I'll tell the notable plugin on ChatGPT, use this data. Okay, and I'm going to copy the link address to the CSV here in data.gov, paste it here into the chat. I'm gonna hit shift return on my Mac keyboard so that it doesn't execute the prompt but moves it down the line. I'll say use this project. I'll go back to my notable project. I'll click the URL up the top up here and paste that into there. I'll hit shift enter a couple more times as well to give me some space. Now what I'm gonna do is enter this prompt that I have uh, Elijah Meeks, the CTO of Notable, to thank. So he walked me through the plugin. He gave me this as a starting point to try something kind of like this. So what is it asking the plugin to do? It's asking the plugin to do a data-driven analysis of this electric vehicle data. My audience is a Tesla sales representative who's looking to convince people to purchase a Tesla over another make of electric vehicle. Please include in the notebook a description about what you're doing. Please do some machine learning along with basic visual analytics to identify trends and anomalies. Also do some exploratory data analysis and give me some data-driven suggestions. So we're gonna copy this prompt. We're gonna paste this here into the bottom of this and we'll hit send. So now what is gonna happen here is ChatGPT is going to start by requesting that project that I gave it, okay? And the next thing it's gonna do is you're gonna see is it's gonna create a notebook within it. There it is, EV analysis. If we click on that, we're gonna be able to keep track of what ChatGPT is doing. And this is, I think, why there's some value over Code Interpreter, as Elijah helped me understand. Code Interpreter is gonna create that code right there in ChatGPT, and it's gonna create the Python code, but the Notable plugin is actually gonna put it into the notebook. Right, automatically, there we go. We just put this entire header in here, electric vehicle data analysis. We're just watching it play out live, right? That's exactly what we can see in these dropdowns. If we were to look closely, we'd see that this is what actually ChatGPT is doing, is it's loading the data set, it's creating a header, it's giving me a preview of the uh, variables and what's in it. I can see it's got you know information about each vehicle, where it's located, its make and model, and so forth. I can also see over on the chat GPT side a printout of the table, the, at least the first few rows of it. You know, it's giving me that same output over here on the chat GPT side. But the value of having it here in the notebook is I could share this, I could send this to and collaborate with others, I can make it public maybe, and I'll put the link in the, in the YouTube video description, so even you can go check it out if you want. And so you can see how it works, right? And we can leave comments, you could go in and, and change it and edit it. Now also what it's doing now is it's giving me some basic idea of the overall shape of the data. So what is it? It's got a 130,000 rows and 17 columns. Now it's giving me the type of data of each column. So this is what we call data profiling, or basically what I call sometimes exploring the contours of the data. It's telling me how many nulls or missing values I can see in each column. So I might wanna look out for why the model might be missing or why it might not have a legislative district. 
And so now it's going to give me some basic descriptive statistics of the quantitative variables or what it calls the numerical columns. So counts, mins, maxes, medians for the different quantitative variables. You know, sometimes that might not be always valuable, like a postal code. What's the average postal code? I don't know. I don't need to know. But it might be interesting, the, the model years, mins and maxes, maybe the average MSRP or the median could be useful and interesting. So again, just basic descriptive statistics of this data set. I'm learning so much about what's already there. Now we get to some interesting stuff. It's actually going to plot the model year here on this histogram, right? So we can see it's doing that. It's putting, and I can see this is the shape of it. I can see the distribution here, the histogram for the electric range. I can see also a breakdown of the top 10 makes. So of course, Tesla being the most, then Nissan, Chevy, and Ford coming in a distant second, third, and fourth. And so there we have it, right? Some basic uh, statistics. I can see all the output here too. It looks like it's not quite done yet. Now it's going to uh, do basically um, some machine learning. It looks like it's actually splitting the data into a training um, version and a test version. And it looks like it's going to do some type of perhaps some regression in here. And so let's see what it does here as it uh, follows my prompt and ask, as I ask it to actually go through some machine learning steps. And it's giving us, it looks like, uh, the root mean squared error, uh, perhaps of this um, random forest regressor. It looks like what it's actually doing. So it's coming out with most common makes and models together and giving us some you know, more information here. So it's just amazing to me, you know, what we're seeing. And we could always come in here and we could edit every anything in here. We could change, we could change the color, we could edit the code pretty quickly and easily. This is just Python, right? So if we know how to write Python, we can uh, program, we can modify what we're seeing in here, make some changes to it. So there we have it, right? So I'll stop here. I mean, this to me is already uh, pretty pretty fascinating. It looks like here we're seeing some. Um, overall recommendations coming out of it, right? Based on these findings, a Tesla sales representative could emphasize the popularity of Tesla vehicles, the high average uh, electric range, and the superior performance of Tesla models in terms of electric range. These are all strong selling points. So it's already trying to interpret what it's seeing here and you know, uh, explain the value of that to someone who's trying to sell a Tesla. So. I think that that's just a really interesting um, overall, you know, kind of output, and I think it's something that is pretty compelling. Uh, the fact that you now, with just a single prompt, I mean, I've just gotten started. We could continue to the conversation. We could ask it to do more analysis. We could ask it to make changes to what it's already done, and of course, we can share and send this exact notebook to anyone who can take a look at it too. You know, this to me is, again, you know, it's pretty amazing. And of course, there are a lot of possible errors in here. Um, you know, it's an LLM that's interpreting my prompt. It may be getting it right, it may not. It's converting that into uh, Python. It's converting that into Markdown and uh, putting it all into a notebook. You know, here it is out on the public web. So pretty remarkable plugin. You know, my hat goes off to the folks at Notable, Elijah and team for creating this so quickly. I think this one is the kind of thing that we're going to see is just really going to overhaul what the day in the life of a data analyst is like in the coming year and uh, beyond. Okay, so there you have it. We'll do more of these. We'll try to you know continue to see how these emerging LLMs are affecting data analysis. I think it's a powerful technology that's going to change the way we do uh, analysis going forward. And so we'll pause there. All right, everyone, be sure to subscribe, leave your comments here, and let me know what you think. Let me know what questions you might have. We're going to take that into consideration in future videos that we do here on the Data Literacy video channel. All right, everyone, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.